like that. Susie Owens. Voodoo. Zaculino. You're watching Comic TV. to a solo comics TV, your weekly guide to the wonderful world of comic books. I'm Mike Rizzo. Normally I'd have my partner Steve with me, but Steve is out of town this week, so I'm taking the chores myself so you don't miss anything that's happening in the comic book world. If you've never seen Comics TV before, basically what we do is we introduce you to comic books, news and information about the industry, st stuff you probably didn't know. We have some great reviews today, including Acme Novelty Library and Black Cross, Bloody, Bloody Mary, oh, Sin City, and a bunch of other good stuff. So let's kick off today's show with a little bit comic book news. This is from CBEM, the comic book electronic magazine, and Newsarama. Rob Liefeld is still in the news, as always, coming out with a new video game from GT Interactive. It's based on his Young Blood series. The game will be $49.95 for PC CD-ROM, and it'll be coming out for Sony PlayStation later in the year. Rumor has it that David Max Kabuki will be moving to Image in October 97. There are some changes going on at Marvel Comics, including Scott Lobdell leaving Gen X with Larry Hammond taking over the writing chores. In turn, Larry will be leaving Wolverine after seven years of writing. There will also be a Kitty Pride miniseries coming out in October. And as if there aren't enough superheroes in this comic book world, Jeff Mastuda left X Factor and he's now with Rob Liefeld's awesome entertainment, Penciling Kaboom, about a high school student who's granted unimaginable power, blah, 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 blah. You know what it's, you know what it's about, it's all that same stuff. And that's it for the comics and news right now in the show. And we'll have some more for you later on. My first book today is called Acme Novelty Library, featuring Jimmy Corrigan, the smartest kid on earth. This is the newest episode in this mini comic from Fantagraphics Books. You've probably never seen anything like this. Basically, this is by Chris Ware, cost $4.95. Now, by looking at the size of this book, which is Pretty small. It's a little bigger than a postcard. It's probably, let's see, three by five. It's probably like, you know, six or seven by eight or whatever the hell it is. Not quite sure. But you might say to yourself, why would I pay $4.95 for this? Why? Well, here's why. Upon careful examination, you will see that the book is full color. It is uh, printed on better stock paper. It's got cardstock cover with gold coloring embossed parts on the cover. Anything that you see here, this is all embossed in this gold. Pretty neat. This is a slick looking book. Well, how about the book itself? What, is the, what about the book content? Is it worthwhile for $4.95? Well, Ware's art is impeccable. You can't beat it. If you've never seen it, think of an Archie or a Disney title with clean lines. Very simple, not a lot of sh shading, and very precise. And this is what you have. The story's fun, but it's not made for kids. The story bounces around through different periods of Jimmy's life, creating quite a tale. This is a wonderful book of exceptional quality and most definitely worth every single penny. 
Now, it's a top-notch book. It's definitely a thumbs up from me. And we'll be back right after this word. My father died by a hand of a gun, by somebody shooting him. He was in the wrong, meaning that he had a gun. So I kind of take that in a way of saying that uh, I shouldn't use guns. Uh, guns are bad, you know, because he always told me to learn from his mistakes. And that was one mistake I'm definitely going to learn from. There's only one way to uh, solve a problem, and that's not violence. You should just talk it out. And maybe if that approach was used, uh, may my father be alive today. Hi, and welcome back to Comics TV, your weekly guide to the world of comic books. I'm Mike Rizzo. Who do I sound like? I sound like somebody from some TV show. Sound like, um... Not quite sure. Anyhow, Black Cross is a new title from Dark Horse Comics, created, written, drawn by Chris Warner. This issue, called Dirty Work, is $2.95, and it's a full-color 28 pages. Black Cross has been around since at least 1990, but Warner has never really got the story moving. It's been bouncing around in its head, in his head. It's now a touchstone pix. It's a little, little. It's now a touchstone pictures, awaiting further development. Black Cross is Conrad, who appears to be a renegade from the military. The story has him hooking up with Irene, a bounty hunter or some kind of trader of goods. She takes Conrad with her on a supposed deal, which turns sour for him. The story is a good action flick. I see why it's been optioned for a movie. Although with this one issue I know very little about his past or what current society is like in the book, it appears to be a violent one with outlaws, military personnel being paid off for information and more. Actually it's, it sounds kind of a lot like a current society. Anyhow, the art was good. It was nothing special though. Overall I thought it was a pretty good book. Not much different than a million other stories though, but it was enjoyable to read. Nonetheless, would I pick up another issue? Yes. Although not exceptional, I thought it was a good read, and I think you should check it out if you can find it. Back to a little bit of comic book news. There are some new card sets hitting the shelves. First off this summer, coming out right at the beginning of June, was Batman and Robin Skybox Premium Set from Fleer Skybox based on the upcoming summer movie, which will probably be a blockbuster. Starring you know who, George Clooney, there's Alicia Silverstone and a whole bunch of other people. Isn't Arnie in this one too? I believe yeah. Arnie's in this one. And, and Uma. Uma, who's she? Uma Thurman. She an, uh, isn't she a model? I never had the hots for her. Remember? No. Uh, Don't remember. There are 66 story cards, 24 pre-production art cards, and the usual premium cards. Each card, each six card pack will be about $1.49. July will be bringing a new card set featuring Marvel vs. Wildstorm. Sounds exciting. This 90 card set will have all new original artwork picturing the two universes, uh, characters battling it out for the first time. There will be five cards per pack, and they'll retail for $1.99. It's just amazing what they can do nowadays. Amazing. It's an amazing also that Jim Lee's back working with Marvel so closely. Also coming this July will be Artist Choice from Comic Images. This 72 card set will feature 18 artists' work, including Frank Frazetta, Drew Hayes, Olivia, and the Hildebrandt Brothers. The art used will be the artist's own personal choice. Maybe not very popular art, but the artist's choice. Each eight card pack will retail for $1.49. And lastly, a great new series of books starting in August titled Hero and Heroine will cover all the golden age greats from 1939 to 1955. This $9.95 book or these several of them, there's going to be a few of them, will feature history and art from only the defunct companies, no Marvel and DC. They look great, and it really looks like a good series to pick up. I believe they're 84 pages each. And the Comics TV News is brought to you by the Comic Book Electronic Magazine and News Arama. It's hard to back away from a fight, especially when you got people around you that's you know, calling you a punk because you didn't fight. 
But as long as you can sit back and, and say, you know, I know in my heart that I'm not a punk, you know, you can walk away from that fight. But I think a lot of times guys just get mad at somebody for something real simple. And I think people should try to get, get along with one another instead of trying to have this real macho attitude. Last show, we brought you the Eisner Award nominees. This show, we're bringing you the Comics Buyer's Guide Fan Award nominees. If you've been watching Comics TV for a while, you know that last year, we videoed the Comics Buyer's Guide Fan Awards in Chicago. This year, they're being held at the Heroes Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is June 13th, which is probably passed already as you're watching this. Right now, we have the nominees for several of the categories. Favorite writer we have, Kurt Busiek, Peter David, Garth Ennis, James Robinson, Mark Wade. Favorite penciler, we have John Byrne, Gary Frank, Tony Harris, Jim Lee, and Frank Miller. In the favorite inker category, we have Terry Austin, Mark Farmer, Todd Spawn McFarlane, Jimmy Palmiotti, George Perez, Wade Von Grawbadger, and Scott Williams. The favorite comic book, we have Bone, Kirk Busiek's Astro City, Power of Shabam, Shabam Shazam, Preacher, and Starman. And the favorite character we have, Batman, Flash, Spider-Man, Starman, Superman, Uncle Scrooge, and that's it. Doesn't look like Uncle Scrooge and Carl Barks will be taking the brunt of the awards this year. In fact, I didn't see them nominated for too many. As uh, was said last year, everybody was wondering if the ballots were stuffed by the Disney fan people. They said that they, uh, the CBG said that they were not. They're very carefully checked. It may have just been his year. I think everybody remembers Robotech from the 1980s. Locally, I believe it was on the UHF station. Well, NRG Press has bought the rights to it, and they're going full steam ahead with it. Issue number one retails for $2.95 with art by Ben Dunn and story by Fred Perry. These are all AP regulars if you ever read any Antarctic Press books. Robotech has your typical manga art style. The backgrounds look very good with the art in general colorful and enjoyable. The story presents a routine patrol when suddenly they're attacked and a dog fight ensues. It's your typical good guy, bad guy fight with the robots and all that. There's some background material also, some other background stories, but overall I wasn't really thrilled with the whole thing. Sure, it was a good book, you know, but I don't like this kind of stuff. It's not, you know, it doesn't turn me on. If you like Robotech or you like the Transformers or anything like that, you'll probably like this. You'll find it enjoyable. But for me, it was not worth reading and personally I wouldn't pick it up again to read. Today's 32nd mini comic review is just a little bit longer because it's called Gloriana. This is a top-notch book, unlike many minis and with the quality better than many full-size comics. The cost is a hefty $3, but the story is a full 48 pages. The art by Daniel Nonberg. Nonberg is done extremely well, and the story by J. Kevin Carrier is a rich, fantasy-laden adventure starring Gloriana, a mercenary working in, as a bodyguard to Princess Nemi, or Nemi, something on that order. This book, which will be reproduced full-size in a few months, is definitely, definitely worth it. This is a top-notch book in all respects. Check that one out. It's a great book. Look for it soon. Um, I, I generally just usually take questions from the audience, and I just kind of rattle off. Um, you know, at length. So uh, I, I just figured um, I'll still open up to questions. Uh, you guys have anything you want to ask me? Shoot. Uh, or this one and this guy. Okay, uh, the question is, is uh, as you're talking about the Heroes Reborn stuff, uh, the question is, is the Heroes Reborn which is again uh, the relaunching of Captain America and Famous for the Avengers and Iron Man in September. Is that an Elseworlds type uh, storyline? Uh, that's my knowledge. That the, the Captain America and the rest of the, the, the books will exit the Marvel Universe. I think they're in the process of exiting as we speak uh, through this crossover called Onslaught, which is pretty cool. And uh, they will find themselves all in, in the chimney around life around, I guess, as, as people are, you know, whatever. Um, 
terming it, but no, the uh, the length is for the better part of two years. I mean, Marvel, you know, Marvel Comics can, we split with Marvel Comics several years ago, so I mean, we're trying to re-establish a relationship here, and I think, you know, we're just, we're just trying, we're feeling it out right now, so I think it was good to put a limit on it. And uh, I mean, we have very, very high hopes for it. I'm, I'm extremely excited about the, uh, the project, so much so that I'm drawing too many pages in the books, and then uh, kind of going over, over the length of what was agreed on. But uh, I mean, I'm really excited about this stuff. So is Jim. So hopefully, you know, hopefully it'll go go beyond that. But uh, and I and I know that, and I'm certain there's people here today who would like it to go for, you know, 30 seconds and stop. But I mean, unfortunately, it's going to go a little longer than that. Right here. Um, okay. The question is, what am I going to do with Captain America? Well, contrary to popular belief, he doesn't have a knife. He doesn't have a sword. He doesn't have guns. Um, I'll tell you that the, the exciting thing about Captain America for me. Is uh, and it's funny because the last year, you know, I've read a lot of comics professionals say this is my boyhood dream. You know, starting off, I remember I, I read Dan Jurgens when he said he was going to do the uh, Marvel vs. DC stuff. He said this is a dream I've had since childhood, and I'm like, yeah, that is pretty cool to draw Marvel characters versus the DC characters. Well, now here I can throw my two cents and go, I dream of mine since childhood to draw Captain America and the Avengers. And you know, I've had people say you have no business being on that title, and and I just think you know, I. Uh, they obviously have no idea what I'm doing with the title, and they should probably wait till September. But if you want a preview of what's coming on Captain America, uh, I'll just say that the, the world that Jim and I <clears throat> introduced in September is a world that is without heroes. It's a world that, that at one time had some heroes back in, in World War II. That's kind of the, the touchstone for when, when there were uh, superheroes. There was Namor, there was Captain America. But uh, we open in present day, and Steve Rogers is walking the streets of Philadelphia, and he has a wife and a kid, and he works a nice blue collar, you know, job, and he has no idea that he was once a guy named Captain America. And the world that it is set in is a world as crazy as the one we live in now. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but when I wake up every morning, I have to get the news, whether it's from CNN, Good Morning America, you know, whatever. I get my, I need to get my day of, you know, what's going on. Did somebody die? Did the president, you know, explode? Did somebody, did, did the aliens invade? And this last year has been the craziest year for America. I'm going to go off just for, for a minute here. Because, I mean, this, this affects what I'm doing with Captain America. About a year ago, this time, I was getting married. And we were going, going on our honeymoon. And it was when that wacky Unabomber uh, issued his manifesto. It's like, I'm going to blow up a plane. So if you're going on a plane ride, you know, in the next few days, you're getting kind of itchy. So uh, Joy and I, my wife Joy and I, we actually debated whether we should, like, not go. Because, I mean, you know, nobody wants to explode on a plane. That's, you know, the worst. And, uh, and, and, and I mean, it seems like there are more planes going down on their own. So I mean, the last thing we need is some guy putting bombs on. So and I'm like, who's this human bomber idiot? And why is he like ruining my honey? But uh, and I think and, and I remember, and I remember like, even though it didn't explode, it affected it affected us in the you know all the airports at that time. You had to get there two hours in advance because they had to check you know check to make sure you weren't the human bomb. So I mean, at that point, I'm like, this is kind of taking me off. And that came on the heels of the Oklahoma City thing. I mean, when I woke up that morning, that that I, I felt ill. I mean, I, I was, I mean, I think everybody was really moved by that. It just, it ticked me off. I'm like, what the hell is this? I mean, are we now a, a nation where we commit acts of terrorist acts against ourselves? And that really disturbed me. And, and it was the first time I ever said, maybe I should go to Europe and live in a cave. Um, because it's getting kind of crazy over here. And then you got these wacko Freeman guys. I mean, for entertainment value, they're okay. And if any of you have Freeman people in your family, I apologize. But, you know, <laughs> the, the, the thing with the Freeman, I mean, that, that's just wacko. And wack, Waco was wacko. And, and we have just people that are doing some pretty scary things to me. Um, you know, I get I, this burning of these churches, I'm sure you've heard about the news. That that makes me ill. I mean I just I get I get very emotional as I as I am now gotta calm down. And uh, and it just ticks me off. I, I go, where the hell where the hell am I living and what's happening? Because when I first my first images of girl, you know of the media, I think when I was five years old I asked my mom, why, why is that guy, you know, waving why is the president like doing this? Saying goodbye. And, and she goes, he's not the president anymore. I'm like, oh okay, so I don't really understand that. And I remember seeing us pulling out of some jungle, but I didn't know that was Vietnam until years later. And so, I mean, there's always been controversy in America, but this is like, for my age, for my generation, this is hitting, you know, home with me. I'm like, this, we're crazy as a nation. I'm terrified. I mean, and then he got Whitewater. Is he the dirty president or is he not the dirty president? He used to go, I don't want to hear about this stuff. You know, and, and, and it's like, to me, Captain America is, is, is a somebody who I really wish existed. I wish he just because he would fight for you and he'd fight for me and he's not a dirty politician on the take. He's not, you know, he doesn't do it for cash. He's just out there and he's doing what's right, you know, because it's right. 
And, and I said, you know, Captain America can make a statement here. And I can, I can kind of work through some of this stuff. Because like I said, it, it just, it, it, it is disturbing to me. And come September, I'm going to be everywhere telling everybody, pick up Captain America seats, you know, try and be more like this guy. You know, because if we all were more like this guy, the guy that's in this comic, I think we'd all be a little better off if we and have a little more sensibility and a little more uh, loyalty and a little more uh, courage and a little more nobility. So, so to me, um, again, when we open with Captain America number one, Steve Rogers has no idea of his life that he once led, and there's a series of incidents that occur. And like I said, the world that he lives in is the world that we live in. I mean, news flashes all the time of things that are going wrong. And there's a rising movement called the World Party. That is, you've got all these kids, and the World Party is, is sweeping the nation. You've got like all these MT, you know, MTV, MTV and CNN are kind of combined, like you get your music in your news. I mean, they already kind of do that. And, um, and, and they open, you know, telling you about this thing called the World Party. The World Party is, is really sweeping the nation, and, and mostly the youth. And the youth is, the, these kids are um, putting the, the, the symbol of the World Party is this Red Skull. And, and it's really what's, who's behind it is this organization called the Army of the Red Skull. And the Red Skull, we reveal, um, in issue two, was, the most, was a circle of the most elite Nazi SS officers that served under Hitler. And they knew that Hitler was bound for failure in the last days of the war, that he was you know, overly ambitious, things were, going, were, were falling apart, and they set in motion their own plan. And as we open up, that plan is completely poisoned, you know, the American, which, which was part of their agenda, which was to take um, the hatred of the Nazi party and put it, you know, smack down in the middle of America. So you've got all these kids who are becoming skinheads, and they got the red skulls in their arms on, on their heads. And, and so it's, it's, it's in the, and they're very militant, they're arming themselves, so it's kind of like, and, and the people in this, in, in America are, you know, concerned about it, but there's like this Nazi regime, it's like the fourth right, the rising of the fourth right, but um, there's a series of events that, that, that bring Captain America back to the fore, and Nick Fury's involved, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s involved, um, it's, it's, I mean, it's a great, I'm, I'm extremely excited about the story, but like I said, it's, it's, it's a little, uh, little bit of total recall in there, the guy who's living his life, and he doesn't know the life that he previously lived, and we explain things. I mean, Stanley and Jack Kirby, you know, that was cool. But that day, putting people in ice cubes was like real Twilight Zone, 50s, 60s type stuff. And, uh, and, and, and